Good evening. It was decided to do an event in Dubai on the 23rd of September. It was a Friday. By popular demand, we have shifted this event to 24th September, the Saturday, so that it would be convenient for you people to attend. So I'll be in Dubai on the 24th of September at 6 p.m. Hope to see you in Dubai. Those desirous of participating in the Dubai event can contact us at the WhatsApp number given below or mail to the email ID given below. We will see you in Dubai. Kindly drop us an email or send a message on the WhatsApp number. Good evening. As we did with Dubai, we decided to move the event in Abu Dhabi all also by one day to Saturday so that instead of 30th September we will have the event on 1st October so I will see you in Abu Dhabi on the 1st of October those living in Abu Dhabi need not take the pain of traveling to Dubai we will see you in Abu Dhabi on the 1st of October those who want to see me in Abu Dhabi may drop us an email at the address given below or contact us by the whatsapp number that flashes below my team will get in touch with you thank you Hi everybody, welcome back to Be Rich. I thought today we'll talk about uh, something Anand and me have been discussing for quite a bit of time, which is about our banking sector and uh, something that needs to be uh, spoken about is what I feel. So I'll let Anand right away jump into the topic and explain what we're going to be discussing. See, this uh, he basically what you want to discuss is how banking as an industry is organized. Correct. If you want to simply explain how banking is done, Banking is a license given by the government and, and the monetary authority, in this case Reserve Bank, mm. where it says, I allow you to take money from public and in return you have to buy government bonds as security. See, government wants to, governments are always borrowing money and they are in perpetual debt. The government, central, state and the municipalities across the world are the biggest debtors. So they need somebody to keep on buying these bonds. So the agreement between a banker and the government Just is... Just give a historical context, little no, bit, I mean, no, the history of banking. Little yeah. Little. So his, this is the basic compact is, I allow you to take any amount of money from the public hmm. and in return you have to buy my bonds. This that's, is the general... That's what it is right now. It is. Hmm. How did banking start? Banks started in antiquity nearly 2000 years ago. Hmm. The original bankers were the goldsmith because there was no currency. Hmm. So gold and silver was the currency. So what would people would not want to take money over Which long... Which is a step up from barter trading. Barter trading. So people would not like to take money over long periods of distances. Carry the currency. Because you could be easily taken, robbed, yes. robbed. So what they did is they would leave the money with the gold smith, hmm. the goldsmith would give a IOU, hmm. what has now become the check. He would give a transaction slip hmm. and you could put your seal on it hmm. and exchange it wherever you went. Hmm. In modern banking as we know, 600-700 years ago, the main centers of banking were Amsterdam, Venice, hmm. London hmm. and Paris hmm. and Frankfurt. Hmm. So traders used to move from these places to these places in different places. And whenever they produced the note. So, note, they got gold in exchange and the goldsmiths settled among themselves. Mm. The first major banker like this became really big. There were other bankers, of course, before them who were big. But the real big bankers were the Rothschilds, whom we know today. Mm. They were, of course, bigger German bankers before Rothschilds. Mm. The <coughs> bankers were basically where basically they had five brothers in five different capitals. Hmm. So they exchanged between themselves. Hmm. So one Rothschild payment was good in another place. So they had a tr same five brothers. Had a complete network. A complete network, yes. They dominated. Hmm. They, be, they nearly dominated for 300 years ago. Even today in London they have a company called NM Rothschild and Company. Hmm. That's how they became very big. And uh, whenever the sovereign wanted, they could produce any amount of gold. Hmm. In fact, at one time, they were funding both sides of the war. They were funding Wellington on one side and they were funding Napoleon on the other. Till Napoleon got too big and they cut him to size. This is true in all of them across the world. Right. The Britishers in India were funded by Hindu bankers. True. 
we think that british was funded by they brought money they looted there was no india as one country if you look at the history of how clive won mm. you will find uh, jagat seth mm. who was a big indian banker in calcutta mm. whose mansion is still there in east bay what is now bangladesh, bangladesh he was the biggest financier of the british mm. all wars everything is financed by somebody okay let's fast forward a little bit this is the history of what banking was so pre independence in india there was no government bank when india got independence there was no, no, no government no 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 before that itself hmm. every 1913 very keen the between 1913 hmm. the concept of central bank was not there hmm. the bank of england was the first central bank no other place had a central bank america did not have a central bank hmm. so if your banker did not pay money hmm. you were bankrupt there was no recourse no recourse and <coughs> the only bank central bank that was there who has to provide clearing and clearing services for checks so no banking was backed by the sovereign no banking was bound in the imperial bank of india acted as the clearing central bank de facto what is now called the state bank of india was the de facto clearing center, house clearing house in the central bank this was in 1913 this is before independence before independence. in the f- the first central bank serious effort hmm. 1913 hmm. the federal reserve was formed and the bank of england played that role in hmm. uk what the uk central bank did is hmm. they would organize gold whenever it was they were regulating the flow of gold hmm. because till 1971 currency was essentially packed by gold correct During the Great Depression, mm. a lot of banks in Europe, America, and India mm. went bankrupt. Mm. So people didn't know whether their money is safe. Mm. So if you went by the side of the bank, there was no telephone and there was no big systems. Mm. So if you go to the bank, you find a huge queue. Mm. There's a run on the bank. That's where the terminology came. Yeah, a run on the bank from run the Great the Depression. Bank. Yeah, where people felt insecure about their. Yeah, so people started keeping holding cash at home. Okay. now no credits you can if you have violent expansions in credit and violent expansions and decrease in credit hmm. you cannot run a proper economic system therefore what happened is hmm. after the great depression the fed became the lender of the last resort okay which was backed by the american government government so basically what would happen is any amount of money if a bank needed hmm. the fed kept on providing hmm. There, there is one the and all before world war 1 and 2 no no this is just after world war 2 okay so th- after the great imp- experience of the great, great depression. depression so the depositor was always sure of his money now in india what it is is mm. there is a deposit insurance scheme of the government mm. it was only 1 lakh deposit was guaranteed that was 1 lakh was a huge amount this is done way back when way back in the 50s 60s 50s okay Then when what happened? One lakh was a substantial amount. Subs- it was done when one lakh was a substantial amount. Now one lakh is nothing. They have now increased it to five lakhs in recent times, mm. which says if a bank defaults, mm. you can have recourse to insurance only five lakhs. Mm. But normally a bank won't be allowed to fail because if a big banking system fails, then people lose trust in the banking system. This is what about happened during two thousand seven? It is happening daily. Daily, okay. See. So, most i'll explain so okay. if you cannot have more than 5 lakhs hmm. the insurance company will not pay when the sovereign owns a bank hmm. even though the bank is bankrupt hmm. people put money into that because it's backed by the government it's backed by it's owned by the government and the government can print money and give hmm. in india we have already pumped in 3 lakh crores to nationalized bank to keep them alive hmm. all your nationalized banks hmm. except the exception of state bank of india hmm. are sick if they are in private hands they will be a run hmm. but because these banks are owned by government hmm. these banks are now protected hmm. and people put money and take money hmm. if you go to a public sector bank and you hmm. go to a private sector bank you won't be treated well in public sector bank it hmm. is sick hmm. but the whole place looks sick hmm. it is sick hmm. and they don't have money hmm. but because they are owned by government people believe in it hmm. banking is a confidence game hmm. if there is a run on a private sector bank hmm. what rbi does is hmm. it there's a shotgun merger, merger. Hmm. 
where the deposits are protected, mm. equity is written off, mm. and uh, the new bank pays all the depositors. Mm. If a healthy bank is being merged mm. for political reasons, like Lakshmi Vilas Bank, mm. which was relatively healthy, mm. could have been sold. But the government wanted to do a favor to DBS, they gave it for free. Mm. Understood. But if there is a bank like Yes Bank, which is completely bankrupt, mm. what they do is they merge Yes Bank with uh, State Bank of India. Mm. State Bank of India invested the money mm. and it controls Yes Bank mm. and is being now turned around okay. with huge infusion of capital. Okay. Normally, they don't allow banks to fail. This all happened within five years. Mm. In between, you also had a mm. failure of the Punjab Maharashtra Cooperative mm. Bank, mm. where depositors have not got their money. Mm. There's a huge haircut. Mm. Understood. That's where I'm saying, yes, bank, they got their money. money. Because Punjab Maharashtra Bank, nobody wanted to touch it. Now, a new Unity fine, small finance bank has got the license to take it over. And they have said they will pay over next 20 years. It is very sad for the depositor. It's very sad for the depositor. So, uh, basically, banking this is where it makes sense that quote which you were talking about. When an investor makes a bank deposit, he becomes mainly an unsecured creditor. He's only an unsecured creditor. Okay. So you think that you are safe. Okay. There Even is no safety. Fallacy that. There's a fallacy. Okay. Like the Punjab Maharashtra Cooperative Bank has demonstrated, there is no safety. Hmm. But if they if it, they had done it to Yes Bank, hmm. the entire confidence in the industry would have vanished. Hmm. Like all public, if you look at public sector bank, hmm. in the last eight years, more than two and a half lakh crores have been invested by taxpayer. That is what is keeping these banks alive. They are just barely alive. Their capital adequacy ratio is very poor. So it's a very thin ice they are sitting on. It's a very thin ice they are sitting on. But since it's won by the government, we are running paper cracks over it. This is what similar to what happened in Lebanon with the government because of the inefficiency of the government and the comp There is no inefficiency of the government. Mm. Banking industry per se mm. is a highly leveraged game mm. in the sense that for every 10 rupees won by the bank, mm. they get three thir 300 rupees in deposits. Okay. So they are leveraged 30 times. Understood. So even if you lose, so I have 10, 30 rupees, mm. I have taken 270 rupees in unsecured credit. Mm. So and I am lending 300 rupees. If I lose 30 rupees, the it's entire capital, by cam, my entire capital is wiped out. Shocking. So if I lose 10% of my capital, I am dead. Hmm. So you have to be extremely careful. careful. On where you keep your money and how you bank exactly. it. Exactly. Who is your banker is very important. Anyway, hope this conversation was interesting. Hope you enjoyed this conversation which we had about banking sector globally and uh, what's happening in India especially. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for watching Beerage. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification. If you do not turn on the bell notification, you will not be notified every time we put out a video. Once again, I thank you for your support for Beerage. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to beerichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.